let's start with your main man, Alex Dabrinkit, who, by the way, 27 goals is pretty impressive. Yep. Uh, Dorian says, we are going to be a cap team. Uh, so we might have to be a bit creative as far as doing guys on bridge deals, maybe some guys on long-term deals. All right. So he confirmed they will exercise the $9 million qualifying offer to Alex Dabrinkit this summer. Quote, we are going to qualify Alex at the end of the year, even if we don't have a contract. Yorkie, I'm going to assume your head's about to explode. Um, how, are you, <laughs> how are you handling this? Well, that's not that's not news. You you have to qualify the player because if you don't, you you lose his rights. So number one, it's business as usual. You do have to requalify the player, but who knows what's going to happen from by the time the season ends to the time the draft comes. And here's the thing: when you make trades, you don't announce three months before we are planning on trading this player. That's not how it works. So <laughs> I th I. It's, I think all balls are in the air as far as, as, far as Alex Dabrinkit goes. Number one, for sure, you, you have to requalify him because you just you just gave up a, a, a ton of assets for the player, so you're going to continue to control the asset. And, hey, he's had a pretty good year. He said 27 goals. Yeah, career high he's, got a career, he's got a career high for assists. He's been a nice, he's been a nice addition to the Ottawa Senators. And, but the thing, this is what it's going to come down to is – can you convince him to sign an extension in my opinion for less money because if you're gonna if 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 you're, if you're gonna do the extension and it's 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 in the nine million dollar range it just it doesn't make any sense it doesn't if, even, if I'm him I'm taking the, the qualifying offer hundred <laughs> percent sure thing hundred percent and and there's a there's a lot of things there's a lot of things this just in news alert the things could potentially change between who knows what's going to happen when new ownership comes in who knows who knows who's going to buy the team who knows what ownership is going to do as far as do they bring their own people in do they have a new general manager do they keep pierre with the coaching stuff all that stuff will play out in due time the one thing i do know wally is pierre dorian's on a two-year he's got he's got two more years on his contract so depending on who buys the team maybe they Maybe they want to see what status quo can do. Maybe they want to build off what this team has done this year. Maybe they like it. Maybe they like where the team's going. So I think I think that's the prudent answer. Absolutely. We're going to qualify them at $9 million, But I think before you start talking extension and all that stuff, and that wasn't discussed. So that to me is yeah. when things are going to get interesting. One thing I'd be careful of, guys, the longer you wait, the more power shifts to the Alex Dabrinkit camp. And then they can just yep. wait. And then all of a sudden, that huge deal that you could maybe pull off at the draft and get some real good pieces that can help you take the next step as the Ottawa Senators, not just for next year, but for years to come. You don't you want to make sure you don't miss that opportunity because I think if you're gonna do it, the draft, the draft is the best possible place to to do that trade if that's what you want to do. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with everything you just said. Um, but yeah, it's the same thing as, you know, if Alex gets a, you know, a qualifying offer and it just says $9 million. I don't know how upset you are uh, if you're him saying, I'll play one year for nine um, <laughs> and bet on myself again. Um, I, I'm going to guess that he's got no problem doing that. Nobody likes to play under a one-year tag, but for $9 million bucks, yeah. I think I think somebody could stomach it. <laughs> so uh, it will be interesting. I, I do agree with the fact that the longer it goes, the more power and leverage goes to the player and their camp. Um, so it, you know, I guess it's not prudent, but it should. You, you got to you got to get moving on it a little bit, I think, right? Bob, let me ask you this: being well, a, a goal scorer, let me just let me ask. I'm interested to get Bobby's take on this because Bobby's a goal scorer, and when you're a goal scorer, you want to be put in the best possible opportunities all the time. Would you sign a nine year a, a nine year an extension? If you know you're never going to be the number one left winger on the team, that's always going to be Brady Kachuk. Yeah. Um, I, I guess it, it depends on, I mean, for me, I would have, I would have been okay with it. Um, and taking a backseat to the captain, I think that that's okay. Uh, I don't, I can't speak to his makeup, but I know that guys, 
that are goal scorers that that want those minutes and those playing times. It's certainly something that's weighing on him. Like I'm, I'm sure it's in his discussion with his agent and things like that when he's saying, "Listen, I'm, I'll sign for this amount, but I'm not going to take less to stay here to be his number two guy." Um, when I, you know, when history shows that I can hang forty um, elsewhere, so it, it's certainly something I'm sure he's going through. Yeah, yeah. The, okay, wait. Then does winning matter? So it, if you can make nine million, put up close to 30 goals playing on a second line with a chance to compete for, well, let's compete. say a playoff spot at the moment, but it could like to really compete to maybe make a dent in the playoffs. Does that matter? And I will say he's playing in Canada, which means his living expenses are a lot lower. <laughs> Have you gone to the grocery <laughs> store lately? <laughs> <laughs> he just goes uh, to Chipotle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it matters. I think, <laughs> I think it's probably hard to be, it would be very hard to walk away from a group that looks like they're building something pretty good. Yeah. Um, I think that that's probably got a lot to do with it as well. I don't, I don't know, yeah. you know, I don't now, know what his motivations are, but I'm sure that that would be a yeah. very, very hard walk. Yeah. Yeah. The other question I have is, um, being a guy that he kind of played, it felt like this year was a one year deal too. Um, not only that, he played in a new team, new city, new country. Um, I feel like he was kind of playing under a one year deal this year as well. Like, and he seemed to do okay. Yeah, he did. He had a, he had a, yeah. he had a good year. He had a good year this year. Like any guy that puts up goals and puts up points, you're going to have hot periods. You're going to have cold periods. Um, the a couple concerning things for me, and he's the number one. I'll, I'll preface this by saying he's still a young player. I believe he's 24 yeah. years old, so he's still a young player, um, and he's never really been in a situation where you're on a team that six, the expectations are to win. The only, not the only one, one of the red flags I had when this year when the Senators really needed him to perform, they really needed, and here's the thing. If you want to be a guy that makes eight and nine million dollars, I truly believe this. You need to make the players around you better. It should never be, yeah. it should never be well. He's got Pinto as his center. So if you give him a good centerman, then let's see what he can do. No, if 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 that's the question, then you shouldn't be a guy that's making eight or nine plus million dollars a year because guys that do that make they elevate players. They make yeah. guys around them better. Like Jake Sanderson, he's going to get a huge raise. Number one, because he's yeah. a great player, but because he makes guys around him better. Case in point, how good was Travis Hamannick before Jake Sanderson got to town? And now everyone's talking about Travis Hamannick like he's this great leader, great defenseman. <laughs> and hey, 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 listen, yeah. he's had a great year. Not to take anything away from him, but to my point, Again, look with Tim Stutzla. He makes guys around him better. So yeah. I think you gotta be you gotta be very careful who you who you overpay, who you give your yeah. money to. And the other thing too, Bob, and you you'll like this as a power play guy. We were talking about this before the show. So right now, the way the power play is set up, Debrinka can stay out on that power play for a minute and forty five, a minute and fifty seconds, and it doesn't matter. Because the guy that the guy that's changing for him is Matthew Joseph. So, yeah, if you, yeah. If you yeah. if you come if you if you come to the bench and you extend yourself by twenty or thirty seconds, he's not caring. The other hand, you nope. got Debrinket. <laughs> you got you got you got Batherson when he's changing. Well, he's got Claude Giroux that wants to get on the ice. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. You know as well as I do. I, I'm not staying on the power play for a minute and forty and letting Drew. Uh, because number one, he's going to be pissed. And number two, he can do a pretty good job on that power play. So yeah. everyone's ass everyone's assuming that Debrinket's going to get back to 40 next year. I don't see it with the current makeup, the Ottawa Senators, because guess what? Next year, Norris is healthy. And that's another, that's another player that you're going to have to have to find power play minutes for. And it's just, yeah. it's, I don't care who you are. Unless you play a minute and a minute and forty of every power play, Claude Giroux is a little bit of an exception, but he plays on the top line. It's it's very tough to get forty goals in this year. 
in this league. It is, uh, very much so. Okay, here's my question. <clears throat> so, Yorkie, at, would you take Alex to bring it on your team next year and for what price then as a second-line left winger? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. Like, to me, he's a guy that I, I see him in the long-term range in the, in the sevens. But he's not going to take that. Yeah. He's not going to take that. Yep. Like he, I can't, I can't pay him on a long-term deal more than Tim Stutzler or more than Brady Kachuk. I think they've got to do a sell job on saying kind of what the Boston Bruins do. The, like you look yeah. at what their top players make. The reason it works because you've got guys like Marchand that were willing to stay for less to allow the team to go out and get better players. And they valued winning over personal stats and getting paid. So it's it'll be up to the players, if that's what they want to do, to go in, have conversations, management, and somebody say, we love you. We want you to be part of it. We see you at this number. Um, that's what I would do. Is that going to happen? Who knows? But I think that, that would be the prudent thing to do, get them on a long-term deal and get them somewhere in the sevens. But I, why would you do that if you're him? Like you're going to – you can be yeah. a top line guy on a lot of teams in this league, score your 40 goals um, and, and get paid. Okay. Then I got yeah. one question, Bobby, before we uh, move on. That's if you are, so you made whatever it was, eight something or a, a year. Did it bother the guys that were scoring more points than you and all that stuff making less? Like would Tim Stutz like give a shit? If Alex DeBrink is making more money, or Brady Kachuk care that Alex DeBrink is making more money and scoring less points and playing less minutes? I don't think so because they have their long term contracts; they're they're in place too, right? So um, I I genuinely I don't I don't think I've ever ran across that in the league. Um, ultimately, everybody wants everybody to get paid. That they're you know you're rooting for the other guys. So I don't think so. Um, but if I'm Pierre Dorian and I'm I'm making sure absolutely everybody that comes in knows you're not going to make more than our captain and you're not going to make more than Tim so those are our guys and that, that's that's the benchmark and you can fall in wherever you, wherever we find you room but those are the two guys that are going to be carrying making the most money and Josh Norris as well have you we forget him because he's been out yeah. so much but yeah, yeah those are your three right those are your three guys and I wouldn't to answer your question I I wouldn't want to go into next season with a seven million dollar second line winger when you have all that money committed to other guys i would like to find pieces that you can plug and play a little more for cheaper yeah. you know and that's not a slight i think okay. alex is going to get paid somewhere nope yeah we'll uh and we will discuss it's, this more in the off season